uh, HIV and its uh, monkey counterpart, SIV, are, 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 are generally uh, proven to be in, pretty invulnerable to immune responses. Uh, particularly once the infection gets going um, and spreads throughout the body, immune responses, for the most part, can't control um, these, these viruses, and they go on to cause, ultimately cause AIDS and, uh, if untreated, um, you know, death in, in infected individuals. And, um, and, and so this is why we haven't had a vaccine for 25 years, is this, this ability of this virus to escape immune responses. Now there's been a, a, a prevailing hypothesis that perhaps at the initial point of infection, the first week of infection, the virus might be more vulnerable uh, to immune responses. But this has not been really testable, this hypothesis, because there hasn't been vaccine, uh, vaccines that can elicit responses that, that can intercept um, the virus at, at, at these early time points of infection. Most of the vaccines that have been made all uh, uh, have responses that come in too late to, uh, to, to uh, control the virus. So uh, basically what, what we've done is we've developed a vector that can indeed establish uh, antiviral responses um, at sites where the virus would come into the body and so that the virus can be intercepted uh, in the first few days of infection. And um, uh, hearteningly, uh, the hypothesis turns out to be true. The virus is indeed vulnerable um, in these early days, and can and infection can be st essentially stopped in its tracks. Uh, not every monkey is protected, but but half the monkeys uh, that were challenged with a very highly pathogenic and aggressive virus, uh, the, uh, the infection was basically stopped in its tracks. Uh, and the animals that were vaccinated with these new vectors. The, the animals that were protected were the animals that had the highest responses during the vaccine phase. So uh, th these data suggest that the, the issue is really, uh, it, 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 you have to have the right type of response and you have to have enough of it. And so half the monkeys had enough of it and the other half didn't. Um, you know, it, it, it's um, you know, obviously an effort in the lab is to make it so that all the monkeys uh, are above the threshold and so we get a higher percentage of infection and, and more recent data suggesting that that's going to be possible. Well, the rhesus version of, uh, of the vector, CMV vector, is, is biologically very similar to the human vector. And in fact, the reason we ultimately tested this in rhesus was, was observations made by my lab and other labs uh, showing that the human, uh, the, the response to the human version of this virus um, uh, had these unique characteristics. And it turns out that the rhesus uh, uh, elicited responses are the same. So, you know, we have every reason to believe that, that, uh, these, that we will be able to translate this, uh, this vector and this kind of protection to humans. Um, however, you know, one of the things that will have to happen before we can move into humans is really to, to engineer a vector that is unequivocally safe. And that's a major effort in the lab right now. The, the, the uh, vectors that we, we used in the study in nature were vectors that were, that, that were otherwise similar to the regular wild type, what's called a wild type virus, which typically doesn't cause disease, um, but, uh, and in fact is ubiquitous in both humans and in monkeys, but, but can under special circumstances cause disease, uh, so particularly pregnant women and so forth. So we want to make the vector that is unequivocally safe in, in, in anybody that's been injected into, and, and that's the, you know, the current focus of the lab. And, I mean, the way to characterize, to characterize this finding that we published in Nature is, imagine if you're looking at a you know, very high seemingly unscalable cliff, and, um, and so far efforts to climb it have not reached the top. But what this work does is basically show a path. Um, we still have to climb the cliff, but we now have a path which we can follow. And we, we have, a, we have, we, we, we have a, a response that we know is protective for the highly aggressive virus that's very similar to HIV, and we have a vector that generates those responses that, that should translate. Uh, but we still have to put on our climbing gear and climb the path. And, uh, and again, that process is going to be an iterative process of making the, of, of designing the vectors that are, that are both efficacious and safe, and then designing the, the human homologs that can ultimately be passed regulatory, uh, get regulatory approval and be tested in humans.